All right, so quotient rule, product rule, chain rule. We think we're very cool and give me any function and I'll differentiate it. Well, not quite. There's still some type of functions that we can differentiate with the rules that we know. So uh, let me give you some examples. So let's start with a simple one. Suppose that you uh, study the unit circle, which is given by the equation x squared plus y squared is equals, e equals to 1, and ask you to calculate the derivative dy over dx. Well, in this case, you can actually do it because you could solve the equation. So you can actually write y is equal to a square root of 1 minus x squared. So here I've chosen the plus sign for my square root to define a function. I could have chosen the minus sign. That would be the lower half of my circle. But either way, I get a function. And since I have a function, uh, a well-defined function here, I can take the derivative. This is the square root of a function. So I could use the chain rule here to calculate it. And I would get the derivative of y with respect to x. That was great. But suppose I give you the crazy, the following crazy looking function. So I say I give you an equation x times sine of y plus y squared is equal to x squared. And I ask you to calculate the derivative dy with respect to x. Well, this is much harder. You cannot actually solve this equation for y. So there's no way you can actually calculate the derivative here uh, with what we know. Okay, so what kind of function is this? This is very crazy looking. It's got a name. This is called an implicit function. So what is an implicit function? Well, this is a function f of x or y equals f of x that is not defined explicitly but only implicitly. So it's defined by a relation. So in this case, for example, in the case of the unit circle, the relation was just x squared plus y squared equals to 1. Now here we could solve explicitly, but if you just give me this, this is an implicit function, so it's defined implicitly by the relation. In this case, we have the implicit relation, and we cannot actually solve explicitly. So this is an implicit function as well. Okay, and when we're given an implicit function, there's actually a really nice way of calculating its derivative, which is called implicit differentiation. So to calculate the derivative y prime of an implicit function, the idea is to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, making sure that we uh, remember that y is a function of x and not a constant with respect to x, and then we solve for y prime. All right, so I'll do an example because this is quite different from what we've done so far, so it might be a little confusing, but uh, it's a really important uh, concept. We'll use that later on to calculate derivatives of inverse functions as well, so it's important you uh, get used to it and practice with exercises. So let's go back to our example. So we have an implicit function defined by this relation, and we want to calculate dy dx. Okay, let me change color because red, red is a little... Uh, Offensive color. Okay, so let's uh, try to calculate it using implicit differentiation. So what I'll do is just take the derivative on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to write this. Oh, I haven't changed the color. Well, too bad. We'll go with the red. So I take the derivative on the left-hand side, and I say this is equal to the derivative of the right-hand side. And then what I have to do is calculate both of these derivatives and then solve for y prime to get an expression for my derivative y prime. All right, so on the left-hand side, I have a sum of terms. I can first write that as a sum of derivatives. That's for the first term. The second one is the dx of y squared. On the right-hand side, I can evaluate the derivative directly using the power rule. Derivative of x squared by now should be familiar. It's just 2x. And then the next step here is to evaluate the derivatives on the left-hand side. So on the first term here, I have the derivative of a product of two terms. So it's important you know that y here is not a constant. It's a function of x. So I cannot treat that as a constant. I have to treat that as a function of x. So I really have the product of two functions. So now I can use the product rule. So I'll get d dx of x times sine of y plus x times d dx of sine of y, where y is a function of x. Similarly here, I have to understand y as a function. So this is now a function of a function. It's the square of a function. So what I need to do is use the chain rule. So I first calculate the derivative of the outer function, which is the square. So I'll get evaluated at the inner function. So I get 2 times y, which is my inner function, times the derivative of the inner function, which is just y prime, which is equal to my 2x. And finally, I have to evaluate the derivatives here. So what do I get? Well, the first term here is this is just derivative of x, so that's 1. 1 times sine of y plus x times the derivative of sine of y. So remember that y is a function of x. 
So this is a function of a function. So again, I have to use the chain rule. The other function is the sine function. The derivative of the outer function becomes a cosine evaluated at y times the derivative of the inner function, which is y prime, plus 2y times y prime is equal to x, 2x. Now I'm almost done, but not quite. So the last step is to solve for y prime to get an expression for my derivative. So what I'll do here, so I have two terms here which are linear and y prime, so I'll keep them on the left-hand side and just factor out y prime. So I get x cos y for the first term plus 2y. The right-hand side I have my 2x, and I'll bring the first term here on the right-hand side. So I get minus sine of y. And finally, I can divide by this to uh, solve for y prime. What do I get? I get y prime is equal to 2x minus sine of y divided by x cosine of y plus 2y. And that would be my final answer for the derivative y prime. Now you see this is quite different from what we've seen so far because now y prime is of course a function of x but is defined also implicitly in terms of the function y of x. And I cannot replace here y of x by what it is explicitly as a function of x because it's only defined implicitly by this relation. So I have to leave the answer like that. It's perfectly well defined, but this is the type of answer that you get when you do implicit differentiation.